So we've created the head in Forger. What can we do with it next? Well, what we'll do in this video is we'll take a look and see what he looks like and what we can do with him in ZBrush. And we'll make some UV maps and we'll apply that texture to the, the UV map and then we can use him in some of our other projects. So let's take a look. So the first job is to get the head in to ZBrush. So we've made an OBJ. So what we'll do is we'll go to the tool menu here. Now, if you don't have this here, then it could be up at the top, which is where it comes from. And what I normally do is drag it out to the side, as, you, as you've just seen. So in there, we've got an option to import. If you happen to have brought in um, an STL, then you may um, do it a different way, um, which basically would be go up to the top again, Z plugin, and you want to go to 3D print hub, and then you've got import STL. But we're not doing that, as we said, we're bringing in the import from um, basically from the OBJ that we exported. So navigate to where the um, where you save your files. Um, we've put our head in here, which is here. Open that file. And then what happens is it comes in in this little this icon here is all of the different tools that are available in the tool panel and you've got an indication that the the one that we've brought in is here so basically we drag it out on the screen and stop and then the next bit is the most important bit in zbrush if you get this wrong what happens or if you if you click anything else you get this effect or worse you get this which means it's stuck on the canvas and that's no use to anyone that's one of the biggest single problems with zbrush so to clear that it's control and n so bring that head back out again and the minute you let go with your mouse or your your pen your stylus then hit keyboard t and that's the equivalent of hitting this button here the top left and that means it's now editable and that basically means that you've got a live object that you can do something with instead of it being stamped down onto the canvas. So on this side here, we can make it a little bit more recognizable. So we'll put a floor on. So now you can see that it's got um, it's got a grid at the bottom. And we can also do perspective on or off. Now in Forger, where this came from, it would have been the equivalent of seeing it with perspective on. So we'll leave that on like that. And the next thing you'll notice is it's a bright red color, um, even though we can see the painting. So something is different there. So what that means is that the default red wax is switched on in ZBrush. So if you click that and click skin shader or any of the uh, any of these shaders really will give you an approximation of the skin that you want. Like so. And you can change the materials if you want and change them to, so we could have uh, material on the eyes, material on the teeth. But what we'll do for this first part is we'll just focus on what we do with the with the the, the overall mesh. So we'll leave that one on because it's quite um, it's quite skin like at the moment. So what we've got is um, a head that is very high polygon, as you can see there, 648 points here. So that's that's too high for what we want and also the separate parts so the eyes and the teeth that it are all one group even though the, the the painting is there so i'll to shift and f to turn that wireframe off again and i'll just show you what i mean by if we look at the sub tool here we've actually got one model but it's made up of one two two eyes two two sets of teeth and the head so it's made up of five parts so let's split that down for a minute first of all so the way we do that shift and f to put that wireframe on again because it shows what are called polygroups quite well go down to polygroups and this is where we're going to group it so we'll just hit auto group and as you'll see there you've now got a different color for each group you can't see it if you have the wireframe off so it only shows when it's when it's like that so now we've done that, let's split that into some sort of order. So we'll go back to our sub tool, scroll down. Remember you're scrolling down at the side here where my 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 um, cursor is showing. And then we want to split to parts or split to similar parts or even group split would do it. So let's just try one of those first. Let's just try split to similar parts and see if it keeps the eyes together. Say always 
and yeah, that's worked perfectly. So what that's done is it's grouped the eyes because they're the same sphere copied, and it's grouped the teeth because if you remember, they were just a torus top and bottom. So it's given us one group here, one group here, and one group here so that's worked really well now as it happens we don't need the teeth and the eyes on separate groups so we'll take the middle one and we'll just merge them down like so shift and f off there we go so now what we want to do is make a low poly version of this um, and one thing that you you may or may not know this is called vertex painting or poly painting so the texture, if you hit this button here, will go on and off. And that means it's just painted onto the, like, like almost what we would call weight painting. There's no texture map involved and there's no UV map. So we can't do anything with this um, if you want to use a, a, a texture map or a UV map. So um, Forger hasn't given us that uh, uh, the way we've exported it. So what we need to do, first of all, is make a, a low polygon mesh. So we'll turn the teeth and the eyes off for a moment be back on the head and we'll duplicate it from down here we'll turn that top one off by turning the eye off which means we've got this one that we're working on and we're going to now make a uh, let's make a low polygon version of that so we'll do an automated version which is called z remesher so we'll go down to geometry z remesher you can as you get more advanced you can use what are called z remesher guides and you can tell it where to put your loops but i'm not massively worried about that today we just want to have a look at how to get a basic low poly so we'll go under z remesher we'll say target polygon count i'll knock it down to two and it won't two is two thousand it won't get to exactly that but it's 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 an aspirational it'll probably be something like five or six thousand in the end adaptive strength will increase if you hold control it tells you what that does and it basically uh, the adaptive slider allows the creation of non-square polygons it also factors the size of the polygons based on the model's curvature so basically if i, I generally keep it on the higher side um, um of of 50. Um, curve strength doesn't matter until we use the z remesher guide so we're not using that today and let's just see what happens if we do that so we'll hit it's going to lose the painting but don't worry about that so we'll hit z remesher and there's a there's a slider here this is called the z remesh project pro, um, progress so anything that happens in zbrush that involves calculations um, it will have a slider up here so if you ever see this progress bar it gives you a good indication of, of whether it's it's going or whether it's crashed or whether it's it's well on the way with this process. So that's analyzed the mesh now and it's made as a low polygon version. So if you do shift and F now, you can see it's quite a low poly version. And that's good enough for what we want. We don't we're not doing this for game animation or game or animation. It's we're, we're doing it as, as a test. But that's that's more than enough for us today. And it's basically given us a 4000 polygon model. So we'll use that. That, that, that will do for us. Um, as you notice, all of the um, all of the uh, painting has gone and the loops don't look that good around the eyes. So we didn't do any extra work. But again, I'm not worried about that today. Uh, the loop around the mouth isn't too bad, although it's quite high resolution. OK, so now what we want to do is project the detail back from the other model. So we're going to turn the other one on. So now we've got two layers, one below the other. I'll turn on the poly painting on the one below and turn off there. So you can see that yellow color. So what we're going to do now is capture all of the data from this top one onto the bottom one. So to do that, we'll have to go higher resolution on the lower one. So the shortcut for that, the, the long way of doing it is go to geometry and divide. And that means it's gone up by four, times by four for the lower polygon is now 17,000. OK, to do that as a shortcut, it's control and D. So we can now just project some detail on. So back to subtool and you could go subdivide, subdivide, subdivide and then project. But I like to do it stage by stage so it captures it each time that you, you go up. So we'll do that. Go back to your head. Remember, you're on the, the, the lower head in the stack and then you want to go down to project. We'll use the basic settings and we'll just hit project all. And that's now, although you can't see it, that's now taken all of the painting data. If I hide the top one, you'll see it's done it. But because there's not that many polygons yet, it's, it's made its best go of it, but it's still not accurate enough. So we'll divide that again, make sure the top one's on, and we'll hit project all again. 
and that's now taken it a little got more polygons we've done and we've now got nearly 70,000 um, and it's trying it again so we'll do it one more time we've now got quarter of a million or over quarter of a million and we'll project again and that will probably be enough for now I, I would have thought we'll just let it project and see what what's happened so let's move this one so I've just gone into keyboard W and now I'm just going to use the manipulator to move and as you can see they look very very similar now but if you look at the wireframe on and off you've got one that's got this low res and high res so that's shift and D to come down the res, D to go back up the res. That's showing us the, the res. Or we've got this one that's just this high poly. So we don't need this one now. We've basically captured all the data we want. So we'll just delete that one. And we're left with this one. And that one now is good enough for what we want to do next. So because it's got all the poly painting data. Um, don't forget, you've still got your teeth and your eyes. You, so we've got the, the head that's now low poly and high poly. But how do we capture a texture map? So let's go all the way down the resolution, Shift and D, Shift and F to show the wireframe. And let's just make some basic, um, I'll just change the poly group so as you can see a little bit better. So I'm doing Control and W or change the color of the poly group. Um, and that means you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now is UV map it. So what I want to do first of all is some um, masking. So I'll hold Control button at the top left here gives us an, an option to change the type of masking so we'll say mask lasso and now when I hold control I could just drag around where I want to mask bear in mind this one isn't symmetrical so it isn't going to be perfect unfortunately it's probably good enough for what we want I'll just add a bit more so you can control uh, and drag around a bit more and that gives you a bit more control and then control and W and that poly groups that section if you want to hide that section control shift and click on that section so that's the back hidden and that means it has a poly group already so we'll just go around the mouth um, take as much time on this as you want um, again we're not doing it with any great amount of accuracy so I'm just trying to give us a, a basic UV map so control and W that's the inner mouth is now done uh, and just just for this particular one I'm going to split the mouth top and bottom so there you go it's in quite a few little parts not the cleanest and this isn't the way I would do it for production but we use this quite a lot when we just want a quick UV map so now we've done that what we can do is go over to I'll open this side bar on this side so we don't, we don't move this side and then we'll open uh, Z plugin and at the bottom of Z plugin we've got this one here called UV master and there's lots of different ways to do this but I'll just show you a very quick way of doing it so turn symmetry off poly groups on and just hit unwrap what that's done is now if I hit this one here flatten it'll just show you what we've done oh it's got a subdivision on it hasn't it so we can't do it that way we'll have to close that one down it has got the UVs we just want to see them so we'll use this one instead which is um, not this one it's morph target we want this one which is morph uv so this is under uv map so I hit morph uv and there you go you can see uh, i made a little bit of an error there it's quite interesting i didn't even spot that but what i basically got is um th this little patch here was masked now you wouldn't you definitely wouldn't want that and um, so we can go back and fix that and um, this just means that the masking was a little bit out so i'll fix that before we finish this one what will happen is you'll have see this little patch here um just oh sorry here and we didn't notice that it was left underneath so we can very quickly address that uh, by running the same process again but now if you look there you go you've got all of your put the eyes and the teeth back on you've got exactly the same looking model but it's got a uv map and it's got poly painting on it still but still we don't have a texture map so how would we now address that texture map so basically we go down here and we go to uv map and we say how big of a uv map do we want we say 4k 4096 and then below that we've got texture map and we just want to create one new from poly painting what that's done now as you can see at the bottom is that's captured all of that poly painting data and it's given it um, a 4k texture map and it's applied it to it so now you've got um, a texture map if you hit clone you can see it come up here in your texture panel 
and now that can just be exported with the model as a texture and then you can paint it up much more to your liking either you can paint it in here you can do some more work in zbrush or you can take it directly to substance painter and that gives you a perfectly usable um, uh, uv map for substance and for for lots of other uses really so it's a great little way of getting stuff that's come out of your off your ipad into um basically into a, a different kind of pipeline so you can you can use this method um for you know lots lots of different ways so let me just do the same with the teeth but i'll do it a lot quicker this time so we've got the eyes and the the, the um gums uh, the teeth and the eyes so what we'll do is we'll duplicate them hide the top one We'll go to um, Z Remesher. Now I'm not going to go back where I was down here because I have it on my panel here. So I'll make it 2K Z Remesher. This is useful to be able to configure ZBrush to how you use it so you don't have to worry um, so much about um, um, going and finding things buried in the menus. So now we'll quickly do a quick UV map. And I'm really not going to take any time. It's going to do back in the front of the eyeballs. And we'll just do a uh, back in the front of here. I'm really just showing you how quick this can be. And there you see, got polygroups all around. We'll go back over here. And we'll go to our Z plugin. We'll go to UV Master. And we'll just unwrap it with polygroups again. So that's now done it. If you want to confirm it and you want to see, go back to your... UV map, Morph UV, just gives you an idea that it's worked. There you go, you can see that's worked. So we we'll come back here, we'll turn the other one back on. Sorry, not the top one, we just want the teeth back on and the eyes. And then on our model, Control D project. And again, I've got it up here. Control D project. See how it's much quicker, Control D project. And now that's that's gone too high. Actually, I've done six hundred and seventy thousand there, which is we absolutely don't need it that that high. Remember, you can just remove the other one and have a look at it. It's exactly the same, but this one on the right, ours has got the the UV map, or we'll have in a moment a, a texture map, which it will have in a moment. So let's get rid of that top one now. Delete it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then just last step is just to capture it. So if you remember, it's UV map. We only need a 2K one this time, a bit smaller. And the texture map, we want new from polypainting. And there you go. There's the, all of the data from Forger captured onto your UV map. Now, all you simply have to do now is export that. And there's, there's two ways to do that. You could literally go, first of all, you could just export from here. So you could say export. Um, and that would, unfortunately, that would only do that model that you're on. So it wouldn't give you what you want, the, the, the top and the bottom. So the best way I suggest you do it is Z plugin, close everything down, go to multi map exporter, which is here. And then in these settings here, just switch everything on that you want and just say create all maps. And that will give you all of your maps for your teeth and your your head in one go and one export take a few you know quite a while to run a few well a while a few minutes to run but that'll give you everything you need so that gives you a good understanding if you've again this is a slightly higher level than um if you just come into forger but it gives you an idea of what you can do with it once you've got it out of forger and it gives you lots of lots of options now to to go forward and start creating this guy um and use him in your other projects. So start with the iPad, take him anywhere you want.